Hey there guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Astrid and I garden in Central North Carolina in Zone 8. So it's about 90 degrees out right now and I'm wearing a flannel um, so that I don't get eaten alive by mosquitoes. It's about 5.30 so we only have a couple hours of daylight and I've come across this issue where it's hot right up until the sun sets. Um, the daylight is shortening but the heat is still here. It's making it really hard to get things done without sweating to death basically. Um, but you know stuff's gotta get done so here I am so anyways um, that's how things are going here it's gonna be September tomorrow today is August 31st and yeah I'm hoping that we definitely have a dip in the heat because it's much needed and all our plants are ready for it too frankly it's not even just me all the plants even the peppers are looking like dude what is with this heat so anyways uh, today I am sharing the seeds that I'm sowing in September. So because I'm in zone 8, I am sowing a lot. I don't really spring plant, like spring sow seeds. So flowers especially, I'm thinking of this. You know, they'll say like, oh, you can direct sow, you know, a month before last frost or whatever. Um you know, or a little bit after less frost, whatever the plant is, you know, whatever the flower is and whatever the instructions say. Um, I have not really had luck sowing in the spring. It just gets too hot. Like the plant doesn't really thrive either because we don't have much of a spring here. Um, we'll get spring temperatures in mid-February and then by April, it's warm enough, by the beginning of April, it's warm enough to put out tomatoes. Um, and then by June it's hot in the 80s and 90s so we don't get like a long cool season of growth at the beginning of the year. We honestly don't get that much of a fall either but our winters are so mild that really a lot of flowers will do just fine being sown in the fall and overwintered outside. Uh, we typically don't get a frost until the end of November and even then we'll get like one day of frost. Um, you know, we'll get like our hard frost and then we'll still, it'll be above freezing. You know, the daytimes will be high 40s to 50s and the night times will just dip barely below freezing. So as long as the plant isn't super tender, um, we're very fine to have like lots of flowers outside all winter to grow and establish their root systems. So I was inspired to do this after I failed most dramatically with growing sweet peas this spring. You know, everyone says, oh, just put them out like eight weeks before frost and just direct sow them. So I did that. I direct sowed them at the beginning of February and it took them a while to pop up because, you know, it's the winter fine by the time they popped up and started growing it was not cool anymore which is the temperature like sweet peas need cool temperatures cool uh, spring temperatures really you know by the time they put on several inches of growth it was 80 degrees and they didn't like that so they stunted they just didn't really grow and a couple other people had mentioned that in our zone it's warm enough to basically subtropical that I should look at this book called cool, cool flowers um, I did that and I mean this this year I'm just kind of running with it because last year the sweet peas was the most obvious failure but it was really hard to direct sow any of the flowers the only things that did well were the poppies that I direct sowed in the fall um, and the bachelor's buttons which I did the same thing so Considering that was so successful, and then the sweet peas were so bad, I just figured, heck, I bought all my flower seeds already. I am just going to see which ones will do well. And 
I have an added complication. A lot of people direct sow. I have an issue with direct sowing any seeds because I have so many animals that love getting in our flower beds from squirrels because a lot of our planting beds are right under hickory and oak trees so especially in the fall like especially in the fall squirrels will dig any and everything up um, rustle it just to get the nuts and the acorns and I mean they just disturb the soil surface so much it's, you cannot you cannot establish you can't germinate a seed in those conditions especially with the leaves falling and stuff like that it's not happening um I mean I have trouble all the time but especially in the fall it's really bad in the spring it's really bad um so I know that it is possible to direct sow a lot of these flower seeds out in the fall but I am going to be starting them inside and then I will grow them on a little bit, just a little, and then I'll harden them off. I mean, it's still really hot here and it's gonna be in the 90s until October at least. So I have about four weeks to have them germinate and start growing a little bit. I don't need them to be very big because if I were to direct sow them outside, they wouldn't get that big anyways. Um, I just need to make sure that I don't shock them with cool temperatures or disturb their roots too much. And I should be able to transplant them just fine. Um, so anyways, that's a huge long prelude. My strategy is to be sowing these all through September. You'll see I have quite a few seeds here, so I guess I should really stop talking and get to showing you what I'm going to be transplanting out into the garden this fall. Like I said, got a lot of things going over here. Um, I have some more seeds. I also have, I have columbine in the fridge, which is stratifying right now. And so I'll be sowing that in flats towards the end of September. And then I'll be putting that out. But, um, I got a lot of seeds from Botanical Interests after I, basically what I did was I went through the Cool Flowers book, read about it, you know, and I'm in zone A, you know, Virginia, North Carolina, not that far, so I'm really confident um, that I'll have at least some flowers next year, but I, well, I guess we'll see. Um, so these are a lot of the flower seeds I got from Botanical Interests. Um, I got foxglove, and this is a the Glaxini Flora blend here. Um, so they get up to five feet tall. I'm gonna put them at the back of the border. A lot of the plant, a lot of the seeds I got are deer resistant too, because I want to put them in the front garden, in the garden by the path, which the deer walk through all the time, almost every night. Um, so I'm really trying to sow some seeds that can have pretty flowers, but also will hopefully evade the deer. I figured a poisonous flower, foxglove, maybe doing that. So foxgloves, I have lupins, again with the tall back of border plants. Uh, really excited about this. I saw a lot of people who had lupins in their garden this year and made me really jealous. So hopefully that'll be me next year. And then I got the Blue Bonnets, which is the native to Texas lupin. Um, very excited about that too. I mean, not native to the Southeast, but native to the South. So, um, and in a similar climate. So hopefully it'll go well. Um, some Calendula, the resina one, and Flashback, which is a more ornamental. So I successfully sowed these last year. I have a feeling the calendula does so well here. Um, it really thrived with a ton of neglect and I think it's just like a really, really good climate for it. And once the seeds in my garden bed started going, um, started dropping, I kind of scatter them around. So I'm hoping that I'll get some volunteers out in the garden bed, but this is just to kind of um, add to that stock that I can either give away, put in other places. You know, the bees love the calendula, so um, you can't have too much of it and it's super easy, so why not? 
doing a lot of sweet peas, um, trying to make them for not having any last year. And I wanted to make sure the ones I had were scented because um, to me that's kind of the point. And these I'm going to end up putting up like, I'll do like a little mini um, tripod with some bamboo um, twigs and you know in different places in the garden and just grow these up that um, you know in different beds so I got the royal blend which supposedly has red which I'm really excited about high scent I mean the flowers look pretty but the scent I really want to have this in our front garden by our mailbox for the mail lady I love making a nice garden for the mail lady and people coming by and then uh, Multiflora Sweet Pea, which I'm really excited about. Um, it's really early, apparently. And I saw someone who was growing Multiflora Sweet Peas on Gardener's World, and they looked so cool. Um, so I'm hoping that these do well for me, too. Also, when I was at Lowe's, you know, they had some seeds out, so I couldn't say no. So I got more of the royal family. <clears throat> sweet peas and then an early Spencer mix which again is like early um, another early mix which is good and then I have a lot of uh, perennials here too that I'm sowing so I'm sowing some liatris uh, lavender more for the herb garden Feverfew for the herb garden. Caterpillars ate all the feverfew I planted, so I'm taking that as a note that I just need to sow more. Um, more than they can eat for next year. Hollyhocks, I'm going to be putting these somewhere else. This last year, last, last fall, I sowed some. They germinated, I planted them out, they did well. They all got rust um, because it's too hot here and humid. <laughs> um, and I had put them at the back of a border, which is traditional, but it was against a brick wall. And you know, the lack of circulation, I think is maybe what did it. So I'm going to be putting these in a place where they can hopefully get more air circulation um, and maybe a little bit of a shadier spot as well and see, see what happens. It may just not be well for this area because it does get really humid here, and I don't think the hollyhocks like that. But I'm trying it again because look how cute they are. Um, I'm also doing some pale purple coneflower, echinacea. Um, this is to start growing out some stock for my business to sell in the spring. I have yellow coneflower for the same thing, and of course, I'll be putting some in my own garden as well. I have Canterbury Bells, which are three feet tall, and it's just like a cottage garden flower. Uh, really excited for these. Chinese Lanterns, which I tried to germinate before, and it didn't really germinate that well. Um, but I'm gonna try again. Got some Oringium which is really nice, the sea holly. Uh, again, I didn't have that much success germinating this last time around, but I would love to put this in our blue and orange bed and also in our moon garden. I think that'd be really pretty. Uh, Agasachi as well. I have some already, um, but I wanna put some in our front garden by our, you know, by the path and the like butterflies and bees really love this, so I just, I figure I'll put a lot of it in our garden beds. Um, the Salpa Glosses. And this is just like something I had bought from Baker Creek. And we'll see if it takes or not. It's for a spooky cottage garden bed, but I don't know if that's really going to work out. Uh, chocolate daisies from Baker Creek. Some stock. Anytime mix from Baker Creek. These are just other things I had laying around. Um, lobelia. This is the blue lobelia, which is a bit um, lower. It's like uh, ground cover almost. So 
is going to put this at the front of the balloon orange beds. Some Orlia, this is for the moon garden. Scabiosa for the spooky cottage garden bed. Um, that did really well last year, actually. Nicotiana. Um, wasn't able to germinate this last year. Hopefully the fall will do better for me. And then some cool little drumstick flowers. Just a nice little thing. Uh, Serenthi here. Uh, Dusty Miller. And straw flower. And the straw flower did really well for me this year. And... Yeah, so those are the flowers that I'm sowing in September. I'm going to be sowing more flowers in October, basically every month now until spring, until, <laughs> until the end of time it feels like. Now we're really getting into seed sowing and everything for building it for next year already. It starts early here um, and it goes through all through the winter. So. I'm going to be sowing a lot of these flowers. I'm also sowing some peas that I'll show you and beans um, for the winter garden. These peas and beans I will be sowing mid-September because I'm going to be planting them out in October. I won't plant them out until the temperature drops a little bit, but I need to start them inside because they won't germinate out here and if they do they'll get powdery mildew and die but I need to have them grown by the time the weather um, cools because I want them to establish before it gets down to frost so that they'll produce throughout the winter. Um, and if they don't, this is kind of an experiment because they may not produce at all. And we'll just monitor it and see if I, see if they just have to wait until it warms again and then they'll be super established and like blow up. I want to grow peas over um, over the winter and like be harvesting peas over the winter. We'll see if that actually happens because once it gets dark here, um, the growth is going to stop and I don't know if I'll take them out or if I'll just let them stay and then once we get the sunlight back, you know, what will happen with them. Um, but yeah, it's, I figured it was worth a shot because I really enjoyed the peas I planted this spring, but it was really hard. I did well, but it was really hard to time that window because our spring is so um, short. I sowed these inside at the beginning of January, planted them out, I think, well, mid-January, planted them out at the beginning of February and then was harvesting in April. So I was hoping that I could like, if I can do it so that I get the harvest as the growth or, you know, in the garden starts coming back with the light. So I would like to see if I could get an earlier harvest, like get a harvest around March. Um, that would be great. And I don't know if this is gonna happen for me if it's outside. I may have to do something like grow these in a tunnel um, in order to get that production early, but I really wanna push it for field grown as early as I can. So that'll be the experiment for this spring. Um, I don't have many vegetables going in the spring, so it's fine to do the experiments, I have the time. But got more sugar snap peas. I loved those last year. Um, I got mammoth peas, which I didn't grow last year. And then these are the snow peas I did, which I really liked. And then these are dwarf uh, shelling peas, which are also call called telephone peas in the UK. And they were really good too. Everything I planted was really, did really, really well. Um, and then I'm trying another variety of shelling pea, the Wando which I'm excited about and then I'm also trying fava beans broad beans in the UK a lot of people in the UK grow broad beans and then they just like kind of let them overwinter and then in the spring the plants like take off and you get that early harvest and so I figured our climate's kind of similar I would try the same thing that even if I can't harvest through the winter really like closing that hunger gap so to speak where getting production back in the garden as early as you can is going to be really helpful for me to know 
and for us to be able to stock our freezer earlier but also like if we grow for other people um you know you want to be able to provide something that other places aren't and honestly i don't even see that many places that offer peas to begin with but um because they just need so many plants probably but i really 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 enjoy growing peas it's like one of my favorite vegetables to grow and a lot of that has to do with the fact that they grow in conditions that not much besides brassicas grow in and you know to me it's boring like growing cauliflower and stuff is kind of boring and not super excited to see cauliflower foliage you know these like climb and they look pretty and I love the flowers and everything so it's just more exciting so anyways that's everything that I am sowing in September uh, if you want to stay up to date with how the seed sowing is going and then when I'm transplanting I'll do a video um, <clears throat> as I've mentioned before I'm going to be planting uh, a lot of my garden beds this fall with the foundation shrubs and perennials and some grasses and everything really finishing that work of our ornamental beds out here um, planting native plants and everything and I will be tucking some of these cottage garden annuals you know non-native flowers um, in amongst them just for a little added interest so I'll be doing videos on that if you're interested in following along please do subscribe and like videos if you have any questions please drop a comment below I will definitely be sharing all my trials and tribulations so thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time